Hello, this is the Wix online meeting, lucky number 113. Uh, today your hosts are Bob and Sean. Rob is off doing something in an undisclosed location. Uh, this should be a very quick meeting uh, because it's been two weeks and we have only five issues to triage. So let's look at the agenda, which mostly will be about triage. Uh, I think that's what we're ready to do. Sean, are you ready? I'm ready. Let's try this. Everything showing up? Yep, it's there. All right. Uh, here are our five issues. Let's take a look at number 5418. Uh, there's been there was some discussion, I think, on, on Wix devs about this. Um, as far as I know, all of the things that we need to do to support uh, right-to-left languages are supported uh, via the Wixel file. Um, and if not, that's a bug. Because that's, uh, as I mentioned on Wix devs, there are some attributes that you can set on dialogues that Wixels don't support. And I'm not sure if that's an actual bug or not. OK. Jacob says it was Wix users. Eh, that's close. Um, yeah, the I, I'm I'm not entirely sure why those bits aren't supported by the Wixel. Um, there's definitely code in the in the Wixel parsing to exclude uh, those bits from just dialogues, and I'm not entirely sure why. Um, but the bits are supported on all of the controls, so. It sh it sh as far as I know, it's possible. Um, the The question I have here is, you know, what do we what do we actually do about it? Um, this is a localization problem, and I don't know about you, but I don't know anyone who's you know fluent enough to translate um, any right to left languages. We used to have yeah. someone who knew Hebrew and could. Not necessarily as a translator, but could do, uh, um, could at least, you know, read some of the right to left stuff. Yeah, I have no experience with this, so yeah. I'm going to have to go off of your experience. Which is pretty minimal. Um, basically, I think we could open this as, you know, as like a feature request and say, if someone wants to. You know, support right to left. It should all be doable via the Wixel files, so we don't need to create, um, you know, new dialog sets. It should, um, everything should work. Uh, yeah, and Jacob points out something interesting. I mean, we could try it and make sure, um, just yeah, you know, not with actual right to left language, just right to left settings with good old English text that most of us understand. Um, hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's not a that's that's a good idea, Jacob. Um, uh, let's see. So, Sean, could you put in there to? Well, okay. So, I'll I'll take one item, which is to. Uh, Try it with English. I'll, I'll do that because if we need to change the Wixel stuff, you know, I'm willing to take that on. Um, okay. And then, then we'll, you know, we can try to work with the person who opened the issue and say, hey, give it a shot. It looks like the person is kind of asking for it to be built in as well. Like we ship it. Well, I'd be fine with that as long as we have translations. We don't have Hebrew translations. I don't think we have any Arabic either. Uh, 
Although, maybe we do. At one point we did. We had our ARSA. Um, I don't remember if we, if we lost that. Okay, so I'll assign it to you. And yeah, that we're going to try it in English. Yep, I think that'll work. Okay. To start. Um, so, yeah, this one was interesting. Uh, if you crash with an exception, um, even though it's in the middle of you know, actually looking at a particular file, there's nothing, there's no, no report. Because it's a crash, we don't do a whole lot of processing on the exception. And it turns out I.O. exception, sadly, even though, you know, right here, there's nothing in the uh, um, in I, the I/O exception class that lets you access what might be the path. They store it and then throw it out, or they store it and don't let us get to it. So, um, but we could um, around this particular code path, uh, you know, add a try block so we can avoid the crash and actually report a somewhat useful error. We hope. Yeah, I agree with that. I think the bug here is we need to add that try catch plot. Yeah, I think we're yeah we're we're we have other try blocks in that in that uh, function, but not for this particular path. So um, I'm all in favor of this because you know, I hate the crashes because they don't provide a lot of information. Um. So I'd be okay with this in three if someone wanted to do the work there. Okay. It's it's additive and makes for better messaging, so I'd be okay with that in three. Alright. Okay, so this is an interesting feature request. Um, my initial reaction is that was that MS Build is this you know schemaless thing with you know basically just property groups and item groups and woe anyone who has to go you know editing this stuff by hand. Uh, but it turns out you can actually provide a schema uh, for the properties and items that are well known or that are not well known known by your targets um, and there's actually some XSD files in uh, the ship in Visual Studio for like CS Proj and whatnot it's not it's not complete at all and for all I know it's one of those things that you know they they did back in 2003 or something and haven't really touched that uh, but it turns out it is actually possible if we wanted to to go and do this. Um, Interesting. I didn't, I didn't realize C Sharp or any of them actually had that stuff. Yeah, it's. It, I don't, it looks pretty. I mean, it's big. It's extensive. I don't know how exhaustive it is. Um, but they're just documenting the you know, the things that are known. Um, so we could do this. Uh, I don't know how interesting it is, um, other than the interestingness of being XSD for MS Build projects. Uh, but if someone wanted to go in there and create it, it's you know a nice non-coding documentation-like task. Uh, so I'm not opposed. I, I don't know that I'd want to bring it into Wix three. Uh, but I'd be fine with this in 4X. Yeah, I was also thinking 4. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, you know, tiny, tiny feature. Non-coding, documentation-like, but it affects the, the, it's, it, we'd have to ship the XSD, so. And it would be interesting. I mean, you know, some of the, if you're if you're used to hand editing your Wix projects, you know your way around you know Wix 2010 targets. But um, it wouldn't be bad if uh, 
some of it was a little bit better documented. So I'm in favor of it. Not to the point that I'd go do that, but I'd be okay if someone did. Yeah, it'd be cool if someone did that. Sorry, say again? Yeah, it would be cool if someone did that. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, it, it, it would be nice to... We have some documentation in in the Chaman online about the tasks, um, but the targets, there's nothing. There's nothing, and especially for, um, uh, you know, how, how some of the the top level, the global namespace of properties, how they map into the the attributes on the tasks, is also not documented. So that that's entirely from reading the targets file. And yeah, yeah, John points out you can. We do have the the existing schema files. So if someone wanted to put together, um, you know, something for Wix projects, then you can build on it. Like, you know, the original issue was specifically asking, um, oh, not specifically, but I believe it was asking about heat. And okay, so yeah, again, we have some task documentation, but, but the targets, not so much. And John's practically volunteering. <laughs> there we go. All right. Um, Sean, assign it to me for like 30 minutes. I'll look up the, the existing uh, schema that I found uh, so you have something to look at to see what they did. It, 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 works, it, it works because, you know, in... In MS Build, everything is an element. Yeah, you know, so you can you can actually build up a schema uh, for that. So, but yeah, go ahead and give that to me. I'll I'll uh, find the original one that I uh, that I found for CS Projects. It's all yours. I'm getting more and more work out of this than I normally do. Hmm. Because I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, okay, so where do we end up here? Oh, okay, so we did get the data back as requested, and and Sean, you volunteered to take a look. Yeah, so, I need to look at it. No worries, <laughs> we can leave this open for another week. Um, okay, this is the overwrite one, and at the last meeting. We asked for more information and have not received a response. Uh, can you re-ping on this one? And uh, we'll see if we get a response by the next meeting. Sure. All right. That's our five bugs. Which means I'm going to subtly switch back. to our agenda, which is now at questions and comments, which we will skip forward here. So are there any questions, comments, concerns, kudos, always appreciated? John's typing. So I will speak over the typing, just so there's something on the recording. Hmm. John might be getting into a multi-instance bootstrapper. Yes. Um, my response is the same as yours. Ugh. Uh, Burn doesn't have anything today for multi-instance packages, uh, and because it relies so heavily on the product code, most of the things that you can do, you know, by in multi-instance packages, that changes the product code and kind of uh, Burn doesn't really enjoy that. Uh, there's, I'm sure there's an open feature request 
on this very issue. Um, it's not it's not horrible, it, you know. It's um, it, you have to teach burn that product codes can change, and that's uh, probably the biggest thing. Um, and then if you, of course, if you want to have, you know, like a, a set number, that's probably not not bad. If you want to have arbitrary numbers of instances, that's perhaps more interesting of a problem or challenging. Oh, yeah, fixed number. There you go. So that's a simpler case. And that works really well for, you know, tests, development, production, that kind of thing. Uh, doesn't work as well for, you know, a number of instances of a database. Um, Jacob has a question, I think. Um, Informs custom action issue is related to the set DLL elder. Oh. My guess would be it's related to the fix that I did for Windows 10. Oh, the, the ARP, ARP thing, modern ARP? Yeah, where I switched to shell execute. Okay. Oh. Oh, so you did, you did it at the level of, of basically running any managed code. Sorry, it, it's in the custom action. Right. So any DTF custom action goes through that code path. Okay. All right. Hmm. And okay. then the person was saying that if he switches back to 3.9, or was it an early, earlier version of 3.10? Oh, 3.10 and 3.11, right, because I put the fix in 3.11. So that's pretty much the only thing that changed between those two. Okay. All right. Mm, that's interesting. That's interesting. The, I, we had another report about um, the modern ARP thing, apps, whatever they call it, um, about it not working again in a in a later release. Right. But this person is holding the OS constant and just switching between the yeah. version of Wix that they're using. Yeah. Oh, wait. I actually, did you verify that this person's running... Is it on Windows 10 at all? I don't see that detail in the... in the bug. No, that's true. I just assumed Windows 10. I'll have to look at what he uploaded again. Okay, yeah. Okay, well, that's interesting. Uh, maybe the switch to shell execute made some other OS unhappy. Or maybe the newer versions break even more things. Um, <laughs> yeah, that wouldn't surprise me an awful lot. Um, all right, uh, anything else? Anything else worth discussing? With only five issues, we're 22 minutes in. Not bad. All right. I think that's it. Um, we should be back uh, two weeks from today. Um, hopefully, Rob will be back in the office and able to do this whole talking thing. <laughs> um, all right. That's it uh, for me. Uh, thanks everyone for attending and or watching uh, we'll work on getting this recording up uh, I might need Rob's help for that um, 
All right, that's it for me. Uh, have a great week and see you in two weeks. Bye.